Hello there, this is the Bible of soccer, not soccer, and this video will end this video. <coughs> One, two, three, four. Hello there, this is the Bible of soccer, not soccer, and in this video we're gonna talk about Nigeria, the triple, false, uh, defensive midfielders, and about how beautiful this war looks like. Okay, I remind you that English is not my first language, English is not my second language, and then I'm going here with no teleprompter, no guidelines, no master edition, and sometimes I speak like this a little bit slow, so I don't lose my train of thought. Okay, so we're gonna talk about Nigeria. in the context of the World Cup Russia 2018. But before, we want to talk a bit, little bit about some historical problems of the uh, Federation uh, in, Niger in Nigeria. Okay, so basically, uh, Nigeria first, uh, how they qualified to the World Cup. They were in the same group with Cameroon. Cameroon is the current champion of the African Confederation uh, and it's, the, it's a case similar like Chile. Chile is the current champion of the South American Confederation and they're not going to the World Cup and in the case of Cameroon it's the same. Uh, also in this group it was uh, Algeria. Remember that Algeria they uh, did a very good World Cup in Brazil, so they have a strong team and they didn't qualify. And Zambia also has a very good team. So it was four teams in the last part of the qualification. Three of them very strong, uh, Nigeria, Algeria and Cameroon. What happened to Cameroon? Okay, we talk about uh, Cameroon before in this channel because they were in the Confederation Cup Russia uh, last year uh, in 2017 and basically Cameroon what they have they have a very particular uh, style of play particular system that some uh, several players were changed to another position especially in the line before, immediately before or behind what they used to play. For example, if they're a midfielder in the fence, they were changed and the coach put them in the defensive line. If they were a, a midfielder in attacking, they put them in defensive midfielder position. And if they were in the front or strikers, they would put a little bit behind okay that way they have a very particular uh, defensive system and when they have to go to attack they simply everybody just go to their original position okay when they recover the ball all the players immediately run to their position where normally they play so this made uh, Cameroon a uh, team that when they recover the ball immediately they're already attacking very very fast in the beginning at least to start the organizing okay and this gives them a little bit of surprise speed okay but then what happened is that some of these players uh, were not in the team anymore the coach started to change players and also they uh, they didn't do they didn't follow the same system and the team came a little bit weaker and they didn't, they didn't qualify to the World Cup. Okay, but we're here to talk about Nigeria. So let's talk a little bit, uh, as I mentioned before, let's talk a little bit about uh, Nigeria. So Nigeria has historical problem in their federation, in the national federation. Okay, Nigeria, goes through many ups 
and down during the history of their national team. So the federation uh, created, or I don't know if they're trying to solve it, but the main problem is that when the team goes down, when the team uh, goes bad, they hire a local coach. Okay? They usually hired a, a coach from Nigeria. And when the team start winning matches, they change the coach and they call a foreigner. Okay? The typical case for this was a uh, Shuaibu, Shuaibu, Amodu. Okay, it's a typical case of this cycle that Nigeria repeat often and often, again and again. Okay, so Shuaibu Amodu, for example, he qualified Nigeria for the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. But you probably don't remember him because he was not there. As soon as he started winning, they call a foreigner. Okay, I don't know exactly why they do this, but the unofficial version that I have heard is that they uh, they do this because uh, they don't want an African coach to be the face of the team in an international tournament. Okay, this has created many fights between local coaches and the federation, the press, and the uh, opinion from the public. Okay, so this, this coach was, uh, he took the national team several times, but he was not the only one. This has happened with another, with several uh, Nigerian coaches. So it's a chronic problem. And right now they have a foreigner in the national team, but uh, he's been doing a good job. Okay, he did a good job. I think uh, maybe this is one of the few times where actually all the credit uh, goes to, of course, the players. When I'm talking about coaches, okay, goes, the credit goes to the foreigner. Okay, he took the team uh, when it was bad and when the qualifiers were in the beginning. So he has the merit to uh, give them the credit to the qualification. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, their players. Uh, we have the goalkeeper, Esengwa, Esengwa. Okay, he goes, he has a very particular uh, style of playing. He usually try to block the balls uh, with one hand only. Okay, he doesn't like to use both hands. He usually goes with one hand. And this, sometimes he, got, he give uh, some second chances. Okay, he has a, he gives a really weird bounces sometimes okay and he gives a second chance to the opposite team if the defenders don't come to protect that bounce okay because he always tries to block with one hand and you really don't know where the ball is gonna be next when you are that kind of goalkeeper okay but he's uh, he's the best that nigeria has they used recently another goalkeeper who was the one who played the friendly match against Argentina. But remember that uh, he made a mistake. Okay, the other goalkeeper made a mistake that caused them a, a goal from Argentina. So I don't think he's going to be the starter in the World Cup. I think Esengua will be. The other uh, thing that he has is that he's not... He doesn't like to be behind, okay, in the line of the score, or like normally other goalkeepers a little bit forward, he goes more ahead 
than the usual goalkeeper standing. Okay, so we're gonna see sometimes uh, strikers from the opposite team, they're gonna see that he's a little bit ahead and they're gonna try to score from far because he has that characteristic. Okay, but he knows this and he's probably is gonna be taking care of that, but it's gonna be the World Cup. You never know when a really good striker is gonna try that and it's gonna get you. So I won't be surprised. I don't think it will happen, but I won't be surprised if he get uh, one of those goals against him, okay? Then we have here a uh, Trust, Trust Econ. He is a central midfielder, basically he is good with aerial game, also in attacking and uh, he has a very good uh, physical displacement where he, where, uh, he can uh, just displace any player from the opposite team because he has a big presence and he do it in a very uh, soft way so he doesn't uh, go with big contact or with a... Uh, try to make a foul or something, okay? But uh, he sometimes makes mistakes inside the box. He's not, he's one of the low players in this team and we're gonna talk about that later on, okay? Basically, when he do mistakes, when he makes mistakes, it's not really because he's uh, displacement, when he's trying to displace some, some, somebody from the opposite team, but because he gets surprised, okay? It's because this good, these two, uh, these two central backs, they don't have uh, these two central defenders. Sorry, they don't have a very good sense of location, okay? So sometimes they make mistakes, but it's because they were caught surprisingly. Then we have here a Balogun. Also, he has a very good uh, aerial game. That's the best they both has. And he has a little bit of sweep or a tackle, okay? But again, both of them are the lowest players with the, with the lowest level in this team. And then the other one will be Moses, okay? Moses actually is not really a bad player. He's kind of decent. Uh, he plays here is his normal position, but he also can place here. And in the national team, they use them here because they use another players in the other positions that the coach consider that they play better there than him. Okay, he has a very good sense of location. He's fast, but the problem is that he is not constant. He is very inconsistent. Actually, I would say, if you see him, you're gonna say, oh, he plays, sometimes he plays good, sometimes he plays bad. It's true. But if you follow this, uh, this player, Moses, you're gonna see that usually the first 45 minutes, he plays really bad. And in the next 45 minutes, he plays really good. So the first half, he plays bad. Second half, he plays good, maybe because uh, he got to read the game in the second half, or maybe because he is very good at following directions from the coach. So during the second half, he plays good, but maybe it can be also a physical thing or a mental thing that maybe he's not ready to start from zero and he needs 45 minutes to get into physical something. So maybe what I recommend to this uh, player that it may sound like a joke, is just to play before the match, immediately before the match, play for 45 minutes and then you can come in. The problem with that is that then you have to play 90 minutes and you already played 45 minutes and maybe you're gonna, you don't gonna make the 90 minutes. So, but something is wrong with this player because usually in the first half, he make very bad decisions, very bad 
shootings, everything, but then you see them going excellent uh, playing. So it's difficult to say something about him, what or when he's gonna do good or wrong. I just found that trend, but. Okay, so here is uh, Shehu. Shehu, in reality, he's a number five. He's a defensive midfielder, but this is not the reason why I call this team the triple fake or false defensive midfielder. It's for another reason. But he usually plays, uh, the, his best position is here as a defensive midfielder, but here he plays there in the right back. Uh, he has a very good vision of the game. Okay, he has very uh, organizational uh, playing. Okay, so he can be an organizer of different uh, attacking. And also he's fast. Okay, and here we have Echehile or Echejail. I don't know how to pronounce it really. Uh, he has a very good marking when somebody some opponent come he goes from the front and he has very good marking and he can steal the ball okay the other thing is like saying that he has a very good pressure but he usually likes to steal the ball from the front he's not as scared of physical confrontation just going to the front of whoever is coming in the attack Okay, the other thing that he has is that when somebody uh, from the opposite team is trying to attack and another player is taking care of that, he also is very good as, because he's very fast, he's very good at coming from nowhere and steal the ball from the opposite team. Okay, he's good at, at that. He also has a very good center pass and cross pass or cross pass okay and the other thing that he has is that he can in uh, making it a like Shehu that he's more like a midfielder there this one he's really at uh, left back and he likes to transport the ball okay he can be fast and he has a very particular way of dribbling or running with the ball because he, he really doesn't have dribbling just running with the ball but he can uh, he has a very good attribute by hiding the ball when he's running with it so if somebody comes and try to get him he's very good at keep, keeping running uh, hiding the ball okay then we have here the three false defensive midfielders NDD or NDD, NDD, NDG, I don't know exactly how they pronounce it Onasi and Obimikel okay all three of them are defensive midfielders or number five okay but they are different they have different attributes for example NDD he has a very good long pass and short pass he has good pressure and he's a very smart player he can go out okay but beside being a defensive midfielder he has a very good organizational skills with the ball so he can start organizing with long pass short pass okay he has a very good uh, attributes to steal the ball from the opposite team and good sense of location so we can say that he is an organizer and here we have an organizer too and Onasi is also an organizer he also have a very good uh, pressure that's why he plays a defensive midfielder and he has a good medium pass he doesn't have a long very good long pass like NDD but he has medium distance pass and short pass this doesn't mean that he can he cannot do a long pass i'm just saying in what he's best okay then uh he's also fast he's fast 
and he's very a smart player. So we have two smart and three organizers. Okay, he's an organizer, but he's not really smart players as these two, but he has good skills. These two have skills and they also have brain. Okay, here we have Obi Mikkel. He only has short pass. Okay, I'm talking about in what is his best. Okay, he can do long pass and medium passes, but uh, short pass is the best and what, this is what uh, he used the most. And in reality, these two shouldn't be the organizers and they should be there and he should be here because he's more defensive than the other two. In reality, he's more a defensive midfielder than the other two. That's why he only has short pass. But in defensive, he has a very good uh, tackle and uh, very good pressure. The only, the other thing that this uh, player has, like a like a good defensive midfielder, is that as soon as he gets the ball, he is very, really hard to catch. <clears throat> Not because he's fast, but because he can just go away with the ball easily. Okay, it's really hard to catch. It's like when you have water in your hands and you cannot catch the water. So this player is like this. Okay, when he gets the ball, he has a very good short pass and he keep the possession of the ball for his team. The other thing that he has is uh, the typical 180 to go, 180 skill to go from rotation to go from defensive to attacking. Okay, he's very good at that. Okay, so those attributes are the attribute that you will say the modern um, defensive midfielder has, but the coach put him there. So in reality, these two are number 10s or organizers, but they play there, in, at least in the position. And in reality, he's the defensive midfielder. But this is fake. These two are fakes, and this is fake also because this they should be like this. Okay, but the coach used them like this, and it has been, been, it has been working so so far. Okay, here we have a Igenacho. Igenacho or Igenaco. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. It's a number nine. He's a striker central striker or he can play also as secondary striker or false number nine a little bit more in the back but in the national team the coach put him here he has a good sense of location and he is very good at assisting okay so he used him not exactly for definition or to score, but he can do it because he's a striker, central striker. But because he also plays like a secondary striker, he's very good at making assistance. Okay, the, uh, the low point in the will say that he's not fast in comparison with the stereotype of an African player. He's not really that fast as the rest of the team and here we have uh, Igalu. Igalu is a central striker that's his position he's fast okay and he has a very powerful shooting and good definition okay that's why he is the uh, the central striker for this team okay so how this team plays so here we have one organizer, two organizers, and three organizers. So usually, uh, Nigeria, they attack a lot from the right side, okay? Usually, they are very strict in attacking only through the sides, okay, only. But they normally abuse 
far from the right side. They concentrate most, most of the organizations, uh, try to organize the attack from the right side because he's an organizer and I have here the other two. And here I have a little support with short, smart passes, okay? But they usually can use also the left side as well. And you only gonna see them going through that. They don't use the midfield or the middle to go to organize an attacking. They only are going to do that in a counter attack and usually when they do it is with a long pass. Okay? Very rare are you gonna see them trying to organize something here in the middle. They don't do that usually and if you see them if you see them doing that, that means that they're uncomfortable. They're, unco they're not playing, uh, they're not dominating the match. Their opposite team is dominating the match if you see that they're doing that. And probably that means that they're gonna lose, okay? Or, they're, or at least that they've been neutralized, okay? So uh, this is what they do, they go by the sides and then if they come from this side, sometimes they can do a cross pass because he's good on that. But because they usually come here, they what they want to do is just keep organizing. Okay, but they're very good. Okay, this team is not uh, it's not weak. Okay, it's not strong either, but they can give a surprise. Okay, so basically for the sides and then they're gonna try to build something to get there. Now, how do you beat this team? As I mentioned, these two players are the low, the lowest players in, in level, not in height. Okay, they, they are the lowest, they have the lowest level in this team. So you're gonna try to get to them, right? But let me mention something before, their defensive system, what they do, they have this double, they have these two defensive midfielders and basically what's going to happen is that when somebody comes into attacking, okay, these two midfielders almost never are going to go together to try to go to the opposite team. Now, what they're gonna do is that they're, everybody, I mean, each, each one of them are gonna have the, their half, okay, their sound, and they're gonna try to get there. And Obi Mikkel is gonna come to make the help, okay, to assist in the pressure. And if the attacking comes here, it's gonna be Obi Mikkel is going to be there and the other midfielder is going to stay with taking care of the other players on the team to avoid a pass, okay? Or to keep the pressure if it's necessary, if it goes there, Obi Mikkel is going to go there and he's going to stay here. Okay, so how do you beat this team? You want to try to come to make the attack here in the middle of these two players in the middle of these two players. Why? Because these two players are the lowest, they have the lowest level in this team, they usually are gonna just try to be there, they're gonna risk something crazy. So if you go there, in the middle of those two, maybe you're gonna try to score from outside, okay? This is how you beat Nigeria, okay? It's something that you can do, not easily, but tactically. It's the smartest thing to do, but you need to have the players who can make this shooting. But the other thing that you can do is, once you pass that line, that this midfield in defensive, okay? and you get here, you're gonna try to build 
some attack inside the box because these two players at some point they're gonna make a mistake maybe they lose their sense of location which is common or they simply make a foul okay so what you want to do is get to them make them work because they are the weakest of this team now why i'm gonna go why i want to go make the attacking between these two because i cannot attack nigeria through the middle because if I go through the middle, Obi Mikkel is gonna get there easily. Obi Mikkel, if I come here, Obi Mikkel is gonna get there easily. If I go exactly through the middle, then I will have all three of them there. Okay, so what I want to do is go between these two, and then Obi Mikkel is gonna be running a longest distance. Okay, if I come this way, I'm too close to Obi Mikkel. If I come here, Obi Mikkel is going to take longer. And if I do that over and over, he's going to get tired. And maybe I can force a substitution. Or I can force that maybe at some point he says, Oh, this time I'm, I'm just not going to run there because I'm tired. Okay, or simply. If that happened, he, the other defensive midfielder, and D is gonna come here. But if I do that, I'm gonna make them do something that they're not used to do, and I can force a mistake. Okay. So basically, what I'm gonna do is go between these two. If I can, real fast, try to score from far because these two, they're actually not gonna come out. All the other thing that I can do is just, if I can pass through these two and through this one, or at least try to build my attacking in this area, just try to build something near the box or near these two players, make them, make this one of these players come out and you have more chances. Okay, it's the same if you do it here. Obi Mikkel is going to have to do all of this. Okay, so it's the same. So basically, this is the way uh, to beat uh, Nigeria in a smart way. Of course, if you have talented players, you can try just to uh, go with your normal system. But uh, this is the way that tactically you have to beat uh, Nigeria. So that's good so for this video. I remind you that mainly this is a Spanish speaking uh, channel, YouTube channel, but uh, you can look in my playlist ANG. Okay, that's all my, all my videos in English are there. And uh, if you like this video, you can give me a thumbs up, you can share it and you can subscribe it and wait for the ENG videos or if you want to practice some Spanish also. Uh, as well, I have a donation button in my homepage and also in this in the description of the video. If you like this video or you like any of my previous videos, you can give me some donations so I can buy some more magnets. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, see you soon.